What's up, everybody? Welcome to another exciting episode of The Block Report. It's your boy, Kicks. And I'm Half Ounce, and today we got Keo from Neon Sounds. What's up, Keo? What's going on? What's, What's going on? Thank you, thank you. We want to talk about entrepreneurship, you know, what it takes to run a studio. You run a studio, which is Neon Sounds, correct? Yes, sir. So is, there, is there something you do before? Do you got to get a certain ambience? Describe your, you know, what do you do before you start a session? What has to be done? Um, everything got to be clean. That's number one, because if if, if 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 the environment around is dirty, and it's like it smells bad or whatever, like I I can't work. Uh, I entered a lot of studios. Um, NRG, I interned at uh, with the Stereotypes. Uh, I also interned for DJ Quick. I interned for. That was dope too. That was dope. Yeah, that was fine. Okay, so did you go on tour? Nah, I didn't go on tour. <laughs> nah, I just entered with him at his studio for six months. So. Okay. Have you ever played coffee boy? No. No. Not even when you intern. You say, "Hey, go out for coffee." We oh. Want, okay. We want two yeah, venties. Like, hey, half yeah. likes half likes the caramel. The <laughs> he goes, never bumped into me. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I I did all that. You know, I moved people's cars. I took people home. I picked people. So it takes a lot. I did everything. It takes a lot. It takes for a no lot. pay. <laughs> what advice can you give anybody that wants to fall into the field of having their own business or even running the board that you do, the digital mm -hmm. stuff, you know, yeah. inside of a studio? What can you tell them? What kind of skills do they need before they approach this? I would say board? definitely intern first because that'll kind of give you the just kind of just give you the whole presence of what it's like. If you don't have, if you don't have knowledge of that, then you're not gonna succeed. You know, uh, I've owned, my first studio that I owned was in 2013, I was 21 years old. So, you know, by that point I had already interned for like three years. So I already knew kind of like the ins and outs of the business. For a young Hispanic man like yourself, man, yeah. how, how, do you, how do you feel with, with your growth that you got right now going? Um, I mean, I feel like uh, it, it definitely took a long time for me. Uh, definitely went years without making any money from music. Uh, you know, sometimes not, and sometimes nothing, and sometimes just enough to survive, uh, which was cool. But you know, now uh, I feel like everything just paid off. So, a couple of noodles were definitely in the. In yeah. The, in my microwave, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my first one, uh, in 2013, when I first started, um, 27K. 27K. That's what I spent. Okay. That's what I spent, like, on equipment and everything. 27K. That's what I, that's now, exactly what I spent. Now, was the equipment brand brand new? No, and even that was used. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, this ain't new equipment, everybody. <clears throat> Keep that in mind. Yeah, 27K, say, hey, this is used here. equipment, okay? So it takes money to make money. Where did you see the most... Uh, most difficulty was it getting clientele? Was it getting maybe people to give you feedback, or maybe you know people support you? What, what, what was the hardest part? As far as uh, building clientele for the studio, that I, I want to say that's the most difficult part, only because you already spend a lot of money. How are you supposed to make the money back? You know, like forget about making profit, just making your uh, just breaking even is yeah, difficult. You know, so. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I mean, luckily for me, I've already, like, kind of had, like, some, si some, some type of, like, foot in the industry prior to me even uh, doing music, and then the internships, and then by the time I already did, uh, built my first studio, I kind of already had, a, like, a list. So, when I built my first studio, all I did was just copy-paste through all the contacts in my phone. Uh, to name a few, uh, Usher, Halsey, uh, Chris Brown, uh, uh, Ray J, RJ, G Perico, Stupid Young, uh, let me see, J Cortez, uh, Lil Grifo. Oh, Lil Grifo. Yellow nice Hill, Yellow Hill. Yellow Hill. Yellow Hill. Yeah. Pull out a couple navy rags and let these niggas know it's West LA gangsters in this bitch. I'm chilling with my lugs. Yep, yep. Uh, Man, you got 10 yeah. people already. Yeah. There's some people yeah. out there that can name 10 people. That's a big roster, bro. Yeah. 
and you paved the way. Yeah. And you work alongside uh, Steels, right? I'm yes, sir. Steels. That's the homie right there. Steels, yeah. Man. He shows me a lot of love. Yeah. Definitely shows me a lot of love on the production, on the production side, and just you know on the personal side too. You said you have multiple studios. Where else could we could we find your studios at? Uh, the other ones, you know, uh, it would just have to go through me because the other ones I do a, a year at least on what those and stuff coming? like that. All of them are in downtown. How do people find you that find your studio? Uh, you can find the studio at, uh, at Neon Sound LA on Instagram, uh, or you can follow me at Slow Down Keo on Instagram too. Give me a bit of advice that you would give to somebody, maybe starting up or maybe in the same position that you were at one point in time. What would you give them? Um, definitely, you, de you definitely got to do things that other people are not willing to do. That's, that's number one, because whatever you're willing to do and somebody isn't, they lose on that opportunity and never give up. That's really the, those two. Humble. That too, because then people won't come. Uh, we appreciate Keo being a part of the Block Report. Thank you for coming on in. It's your boy Kicks, And I'm Half Ounce. And this is another episode of Block Report.